Silver's been a bit more in favor right now. We're starting to see, you know, a big drive into that. So the ratio is starting to come together. People are playing that 20% investment demand on silver, the 80% the industrial demand. You look at copper futures, they've gone through the roof. And the fund probably bought back somewhere in the neighborhood of 80,000 contracts over the last week. That would put them net short about 200,000 contracts, which is still a, a very large position. There's been a lot of talk over the last couple of months with regards to the position the funds hold on the net short side and how that- Copper has been one of the best performing commodities out there and has outperformed all the other metals out there, including the precious metals since this bottom of the V-shape. If the bulls can achieve consecutive closes out above here, we wouldn't be surprised to see that encourage a little bit more short covering, potentially take us back towards this 525 to 530 area. This is the top end of the range before we really started breaking down there. From a risk reward perspective, these four star uh, support and resistance pockets are, are great areas. Uh, we bumped up against the top end of this resistance range that we laid out in our livestock roundup. It really failed to get out above there with any conviction. And this just wasn't the top end of the range uh, for May, but this was also significant support on the back of that Tyson fire last fall. We've been in a holding pattern between about 8,000 and just north of 10,000. For the past two to three months, the Federal Reserve continued to institute more monetary easing, providing stimulus measures out there. You're gonna see this flight into alternative assets like Bitcoin.